I recently made a video on how to make decisions on how you should structure your SharePoint online sites. And I recommended that when it comes to team collaboration, you should think of your organization as a network of groups rather than a hierarchy. And that you should create a team site for each group in the network so they can collaborate together. If you haven't checked out that video, use the link in the right hand corner now to go watch it. So the advice in that video stands for team collaboration, which means where people are coming together to create information. That could be content like documents or pages. But there is another type of site in SharePoint Online that I want to talk about, and that's the communication site. So communication sites have a different use. And in this video, I want to talk about why you would create one. So this is part two in a series about SharePoint sites, and it's called when should I use communication sites? So what are communication sites? Well, if team sites are for creating information, communication sites are for presenting that information to the rest of the organization. The members of team sites will usually be contributors. They will be a relatively small group of people working together to create stuff. With team sites, most of the people who have access to SharePoint site are members and can add and modify the content. Communication sites will have a small group of creators and a potentially very large group of viewers who want to read the stuff that's been created. With communication sites, most of the people who have access are viewers and don't need to add or modify the content. They just need to be able to read it. So to summarize, you could think of it this way. Team sites are for creating in small groups and communication sites are for sharing with everyone. So when would you create a communication site? Let's look at one example to illustrate the point. This company operates in different countries, the US, India and China. The Human Resources Department is not bound to any country, it cuts across all of them. The Human Resources Department creates information that needs to be shared with everyone in the organisation. And they'll create policies for vacation, benefits, salary, and there'll be codes of conduct and dress. There'll be all sorts of information that need to be shared with the organisation so it can operate properly. So in our network, the human resources group would have a team site for collaboration and it would have a separate communication site for sharing all the information that it creates. So let's assume that not every group in the network will need a communication site. A company wide group like human resources would because of its need to share with the rest of the organization. A group that's been temporarily created to deliver a project would need a team site to collaborate but wouldn't necessarily need the overhead of a communication site because there's usually nothing that a project needs to share with the whole organization. We should find that there will be many more team sites than there are communication sites. So you might be thinking, why not just have one site and create and share the content in the same place? Well, to answer that, let's have a look at the differences between team sites and communication sites. First of all, permissions. Team sites are connected to Office 365 groups. So when you create an Office 365 group, a SharePoint team site is also created and they stay linked together. The SharePoint team site uses the group for all its permissions. So if you're an owner of the group, you're also an owner of the SharePoint site. Only individuals can be members of the site. So that makes managing permissions very simple at the individual level. When you create a communication site, it is a standalone site that needs its permissions set independently. It isn't connected to an Office 365 group. When you share the site, you can add individuals, Office 365 groups and old school security groups. This makes managing permissions very simple at the group level. So second difference is the features and layout. Team sites are all about collaboration. And so you have the features and the page layouts that you need to get that type of work done. So you have a left-hand navigation with links to conversations and document libraries, as well as a team news area. And you have an activity section on the homepage to show you what's been worked on. And you have a document library to display which new documents have been created in a standard list view. Communication sites, however, are optimized to display information like stories or news. So they have a navigation along the top out of the way. The home page is very image heavy and it assumes viewers will be scanning for stories that interest them. There is an events section which shows you a tile view of up and coming calendar items 
and you have a document library in tile view as well. So communication sites have three templates to choose from when you create the site. Topic, showcase and blank. Topic is optimized for sharing information such as news, events and other content. Showcase is for photos or images to showcase a product, team or event. And blank is to create your own design. So because team and communication sites are optimized to do different jobs, they have different features and layouts. So to summarize then, why would you create a communication site? Communication sites are used to publish information such as news about products, teams and events. They are for small groups of creators that want to share their content with larger groups of viewers. And they have features that make it easier to create good looking content that is easy to read and share. So that's your overview of SharePoint communication sites.